Hello and welcome. Um, <laughs> hi, Lauren. Ignore my dog. She just wants attention because she's needy. Aren't you? Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about aggression in rats, specifically hormonal aggression in rats, because they can have more than one type of aggression, like fear aggression, or believe it or not, they can have food aggression. I know some people think that rats can't, but they can. Uh, but they can have human aggression, they have rat aggression, but we're talking specifically hormonal aggression. My love, this is not about you. <laughs> So, uh, I figured this would be a, a good video to do just because I've obviously been dealing with some hormonal aggression issues. So yeah, I, I have a, obviously, Sunny and Cloud just got spayed for hormonal aggression. And currently their sister Foggy is also displaying signs of hormonal aggression. So it's more common in males, but it's not uncommon in females by any means. It's just not talked about as often and a lot of times I think that's because the symptoms can be more subtle than with males. So let's talk about males first. Uh, in general, actually I'll start here. In general, most rats aren't going to become hormonally aggressive until they're a little bit older, like six months and older, but it is possible to get one that's aggressive younger, which I'll talk about in a bit <laughs> with an example of one who was aggressive younger. But uh, typically it's around six months. So with males, around the six month mark is when they get a surge of hormones that can make them aggressive. And sometimes those hormones will calm down and sometimes they won't. So if they're attacking another rat a lot, it's a pretty good bet that they should be neutered. And uh, it can also take on, like, the hormones can take on another effect where they're just kind of nervous and anxious and they can't settle down it's not that they're being aggressive but that they're starting fights because they're scared and under i know i'm aware of her i don't know if you are and it's because they're scared and at that point they should also you should also consider neutering them in some places uh they have a, an implant that you can do for both males and females uh i don't have that here and then the thing with the implant is it's not 100% effective. So it's a good option for older rats, but in my opinion, if you have a young rat and they're displaying hormonal issues, you should probably just spay and neuter surgically because it is way more effective. So male rats, like I said, they around six months old will get a surge of hormones and they can become aggressive around then. From what I can tell, it's usually a lot more obvious with males from the get-go. They're constantly causing fights. They're drawing blood. It's like rat balls all over the place. And not, not the male rat balls. I mean, the fight ball. And that's just how it can be. And then sometimes they'll seem fine. And then you try introducing new rats to them. And that's when they decide to go from a sweet little baby angel to a little demon. And cause all sorts of problems. And then, yes, you neuter them. So with males, it takes... 68 weeks for their hormones to calm down and for them to return to the rat they were before because spaying and neutering does not fix personality it only fixes hormonal aggression and also you know if you don't want pregnancies it fixes that too but the more effective way is to just keep the rats apart in that case uh so with females however things are a little bit different so Again, six months is a good measure for when they're going to start having these issues. So around six months old, they can start displaying symptoms. So sometimes it's explosive like it is with males most of the time. And it's like very obvious, Ow. like Sailor, who I'll talk about in a minute. Ow. And then sometimes it's less obvious, like with my weather girls. They weren't causing severe fights they were picking on humdrum because it's always humdrum why do they always pick on humdrum i do know why they always pick on humdrum but i feel bad because she's my old girl oh but uh so with my weather girls it started with cloud i'd have her out on the desk and i would notice that she just kind of poof up so when a rat's fur stands on end it's a sign of agitation or pain uh, the best way to figure out which one it is is just take them to the vet. If they look fine physically, they're probably agitated by something else. So she would poof up during, in my free room area where it smelled like other rats. And then she started getting poofy in the cage 
or when she was eating and if anyone was near her, she would get poopy. And then Sunny started doing it about two weeks later. Again, just big poof ball walking around. They never got truly aggressive with like me if I smelled like other rats. I was never worried about being bit or anything by them, but I could tell that they were getting stressed more easily, more often, and stress will lower the immune system. So even though they weren't causing fights, I knew the safest thing because well, A, it would get worse, and B, if the, the constant stress would weaken their immune system, they could get sick. So that's why I decided to spay them. So what's happening with Foggy right now, my dog is sitting on my camera woman's lap and she's making faces. Oh, someone's staring at me. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Laura. What are you doing? Looking at two different things at once. <laughs> so mean to her. God was meaner. It's not her fault. I never said it was. She has very big eyes and they point in opposite directions. I go joke. It's for you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so with cloud or sorry with foggy what's going on right now is again the poofiness so when i first noticed it she was sitting on my shoulder and she was staring at firefly who's in this cage and she was just she got poofy and i was just like hmm is someone behind me <laughs> she was like glaring <laughs> at the back of your head uh, i was like hmm well that's odd and then it happened again when i smelled like dorothy she sniffed my hand and she got poofy and then she started fighting humdrum for select pieces of food which is very unlike foggy she's always been a very gentle sweet lamb and now she's a little chaos demon who's stressing me out <laughs> and with foggy i do feel like if i smell like another rat, if i let this continue at some point i'm going to smell like another rat probably dorothy and she's going to bite me i feel i can feel like that's going to happen thankfully i'm going to get her taken care of soon and i'm going to eat dorothy <laughs> but again this behavior is all indi indicative of hormonal aggression because they're getting territorial at the scent of other rats. They're getting territorial over food. Food aggression can be a symptom of hormonal aggression. Just like if they bite you, that can be a symptom of hormonal aggression. Constant fighting can be a symptom. Uh, with females, and I suppose males too, I haven't, I haven't heard too many people talk about uh, males doing this, but with females, it's very common that when one of them is in heat that they hump each other and when they're hormonally aggressive they also will do this but they'll do it relentlessly and sometimes when another rat isn't in heat so it's a constant like they pick on each other basically it's a constant relentless thing and then the rat who's being targeted gets very stressed out and it can become a fight so if they are consistently drawing blood if they're doing that, if they're puffing up at the scent of other rats, all of that is symptoms of hormonal aggression. So the best thing to do is to spay or neuter. Uh, I know a lot of people just say that the rat doesn't get along with other rats and needs to live alone. Rats do not do well alone. They need companionship. They are a social animal. They are a highly social animal. And you as a human being are not enough for them. They need company of rats. So. If you have a rat that isn't spayed or neutered and not getting along with them, spay and neuter them, and then you can try reintroductions. And it's best at that point after you wait the six to eight weeks for males. For females, it's two to three weeks. Uh, at that point, the best thing to do, two to four weeks? Two to four weeks, sorry. At that point, the best thing to do is to do like a full reintroduction starting from like stage one all the way up to the big stage with the carrier method. If they still won't get along, at that point, my best suggestion would be to try and either get rats of the opposite sex or rehome to someone who has rats of the opposite sex and see if the rat will get along with them. Because in general, it's easier. Uh, depending on, like, females, uh, <laughs> the biggest issue with intros in females is personality, not hormones. As with males, it, the biggest issue is hormones, not personality. So like introducing a female to a male group is a lot easier, I've noticed, than introducing a male to a female group. Because if the females do not like him, they will let you know. <laughs> also, if they're like Sailor, it can be difficult. Uh, and if that doesn't work, if you have no access to other rats, if you can't keep trying, you know, 
it's at that point best to consider quality of life for the rat because they could become very stressed, sick, mite ridden, like it's not good for them to be alone. But typically spaying and neutering works. And if you have the implant, a lot of times that works too. Uh, there was a couple of things I forgot to mention in the uh, video and I wanted to mention them here. Sorry, I say there was giving me kisses. I wanted to mention them here before we move on to the, um, before we move on to my personal accounting of having rats with hormonal aggression. So starting with um, scent marking, I completely forgot about scent marking. It's a, a sign that your rat might be hormonally aggressive. Scent marking is when they rub their bodies or their, their little hands on things to get their scent on it. It's an incredibly normal behavior and oftentimes rats will do this for perfectly fine reasons it's only a sign if it's like obsessively done and then sometimes they'll do it if something's new so like if they, they're in a new environment if there's a new rat and it's not necessarily a sign of hormonal aggression but in combination with some of the other things i talked about it can be so like sailor for example would scent mark when she was hormonally aggressive and unfortunately i don't have a very good video to show you what i'm talking about so uh, my description is all i have um hi heidi Hi, baby girl. And the other thing I wanted to talk about uh, is breeders, I guess, like American breeders and uh, misinformation that goes around with them, which is that uh, if you have a rat that's hormonally aggressive, they will always be hormonally aggressive and the only solution is to euthanize them. That is not the case. Like Sailor, for example, a lot of people would say I should have euthanized her when she Do you wanna be in the video? Do you wanna be in the video, baby? No? You gonna go? Okay. When she became hormonally aggressive and didn't calm down much like she Calm down a ton, but she still has issues with other rats. A lot of people would say that I should have just euthanized her right then because it was the, the kinder thing to do or whatever. But, you know, she's been living very happily with her sisters for a year and a half now, so I don't see the value in that argument, to be perfectly honest. But it's something that you might run into because people honestly believe it, and uh, they're very stubborn about listening to other people who've had other accounts of aggressive rats. They'll even argue once they see that the rat has calmed down and is perfectly fine that it's still bad. So, and they, some of the reason they do this is because aggression can be genetically linked. Like, obviously, all three of my weather girls are aggressive. That is a genetic issue. But it can also happen randomly in a line that it's never had an aggression issue in their entire history. Because it's hormonal. Like, male rats, as I said, have surges of hormones. Sometimes they don't calm down. And... It's just something you sometimes have to deal with when you want rats. And I personally don't think you should, you know, if you're not willing to do the surgery or get the implant, you shouldn't have rats. And in my personal opinion, when people tell you to euthanize a rat for, for being hormonally aggressive before you do anything to try and save them, it's the lazy way out. You're just doing what's easiest for you and not what's best for the rat, so. Are there times where a rat will be so aggressive that that's the only ish, that's the only solution? Yes, but it is incredibly rare. So just keep all that in mind if you're dealing with this. Is like there is a chance there is a good chance you will get your rat into a good situation where they can be happy. So let's talk about my experience with hormonal rats. Let's start with Sailor. I think the first time I told Cappy, who's my camera woman that I thought I was going to have to get Sailor spayed. I think she was 10 weeks old. Does that sound about right? It was immediately. <laughs> it was very fast. I and was... I'm your executive producer. You keep saying camera woman. I'm executive producer. I'm the dick wolf of this operation. Okay. D <laughs> so Sailor, when basically, it was kind of chaotic when I got the triplets. I had no notice. I had to rush out and get a cage. The cage didn't work out. Riff Raff lost a toe because of that cage, and I ended up having to move intros up a little bit. They were old enough to do it, but it was just, 
And also, they weren't the problem. Like, they weren't the problem. I mean, my older girls, they were the problem. Babies. So, um, when I did intros, Heidi and Riff Raff just played dead the whole time. Insert picture here of Heidi playing dead. But Sailor, Sailor decided that she wasn't going to be messed with. And she targeted Humdrum, because that's what Sailor does. And it got to the point where Humdrum started picking on Sailor just to get her to leave her alone. And Sailor held a grudge. So she was always a problem. And I'd say around four months old, I started noticing her really harassing Humdrum. She wasn't fighting her, but it was constant chasing, constant humping. I couldn't get her to stop. And I was just like, I feel like I'm going to have to get her spayed. And then at six months old, it was like a switch flipped in her head. I was in the kitchen, I was making their salad, and I heard their wheel, I have a metal wheel attached to their cage, and if it gets hit, it wobbles and makes a very distinct sound. So I was in the kitchen, and I heard a loud thump, and then the wheel wobbling and squeaking. So I came in here, and everything seemed fine. Like, everyone in the cage was just like, oh, we don't know what happens, and I was just like, okay. So I brought them their salad back and then I sat down to work and 30 minutes, 45 minutes goes by and all of a sudden screaming. They were just screaming and I rushed over and Sailor was attacking Humdrum and I separated them. I checked Humdrum over. I didn't immediately see any blood or anything. So I was like, okay, so Sailor's just in a mood today, probably, but I had a sinking feeling in my gut. And I put Humdrum... She popped up to do big yawn. I put Humdrum back in, and I went and sat down. Another 30, 45 minutes goes past. Another fight. Just as much squeaking, just as much screaming. It's worse this time. I rush over. I grab Sailor. I pull her out. Because I knew it was her this time. I knew she was the instigator because I had been watching them. I pulled her out. I calmed her down. I put her back in, and she immediately went for Humdrum again. She started seeking her out. And that's when I was like, yep. No more uterus for you. So I pulled her back out. And I checked over Humdrum again and I found bite wounds all over her back and her stomach and on her face. And I was just like, okay. So I got Sailor Spade about two ish weeks later. And in that two weeks of waiting, she got so bad. She tried to bite me, she tried to bite my executive producer. She would try, I tried to see if she would get along with Heidi. So when I put Heidi in her cage, she immediately fought with Heidi. It was a lot. <laughs> I remember my friend was sitting on my bed and Sailor had cardboard bedding at that point and she had pushed a bunch through the bars because she was, stre <laughs> she was stressed and she wasn't happy. And my friend and I were talking and she just started picking up the cardboard and sliding it back through the bars. And Sailor, who was in her house, heard this and came shooting out, launched herself at the bars, bared her teeth, started chattering and hissing, and we were just like, oh boy. <laughs> it's me when Sarah wakes me up too early without a bag of McDonald's. <laughs> oh, so. I just kicked the camera. Uh, I, this is gonna be a do as I say, not as I do situation. Here's some trial and error. I still handled Sailor. Uh, I'm not going to say that you guys won't, but I am going to say if your rat is starting to bite you, maybe don't handle them. I did. I just kind of figured out the boundaries. Like, I never reached into her cage. I certainly never reached into her hide or her hammock because that was a guarantee bite. I just kind of worked with her because she turned out it was, she was going to be separated for like five weeks because it was two weeks before I get her spayed. And then she took like three and a half weeks before her, her hormones calmed down enough that I could try reintroductions. And at which point I did try. And for two blissful weeks after intros, everything was glorious and amazing. And then Sailor decided she was done with that. And she attacked Humdrum again and again until I was like, all right, I did what I could. I pulled her out and I took a little while to think about what to do because I had the option of either getting boys or trying her with her sisters. Obviously, you can tell I tried her with her sisters. She gets along with them beautifully, and I have tried to introduce her to other rats, because I thought maybe it was just a personality issue with Humdrum. I've tried her with Ducky and Dorothy. 
I tried her with the boys. I tried her, obviously, with all five of the girls. She's following your finger. Hey, baby. I tried her with all five of the girls that I had her with before, and she hated all of them. <laughs> she won't get along with anybody, so. Sometimes you get a rat like her. Usually spang works in her case. She knows that you're talking smack. Hey. She's aware. In her case, it was a success because, as you can see, I'm sticking my finger into the bars, and she has not even put her teeth on me. Now, cloud and sunshine. Uh, I already explained kind of what their symptoms were and how that went. I got them spayed uh, about a month ago. Tomorrow will be a month. And they got into a couple of scuffles with Humdrum. With Sailor, she picked Humdrum because she held a grudge. With Cloud and Sunshine and Foggy, they're picking on Humdrum because she's not related to them. And I find that rats will be kinder to their litter mates, typically. And I think that's why Humdrum's getting bullied. Also, Humdrum's a little bit of I love her with my whole heart, but she is a grump. She is such a grump. And Wookie, her sister, is not so grump. Wookie's a perfect angel who Wookie accepts babies, like, so easily. Wookie is the most flawless rat yeah. that has ever existed. Wookie basically raised Ducky and Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... I got them spayed. I put them back in as soon as they were healed because it had never gotten too bad. And their hormones calmed down after about... Sunny was, like, a week and a half, honestly. And Cloud was three weeks. And then... They were completely back to normal. They're happy, healthy. They're getting along with Humdrum. I've seen them in piles with Humdrum again, which makes me so happy. And Foggy, I don't know when I'll be able to get her spayed because we're going we're going through a bit of a vet situation where I live in where I live. Uh, but hopefully it'll be similar because she's not too bad yet. She's only gotten into one scuffle, and she's only chased the others a couple of times. It helps that all three of the females she's living with are spayed so she doesn't kind of like get triggered by their hormones but hopefully it'll be easy and quick. So yes uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did do all the fun stuff down below. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!